In this video, we're going to be coding the selection sort sorting algorithm from scratch in Java. It only takes a few lines of code, so it's a great programming exercise for beginner programmers. I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description. I've recently added a whole lesson all about Java streams to the course that a lot of people have been asking about. So go check it out. Okay, so we'll jump right into the code in just a second, but first it's a good idea to talk about exactly how the selection sort algorithm works. So let's say you have an array of integers like we have here. The job of the selection sort algorithm, or any sorting algorithm, is to put these elements in their natural order, which for integers is going to be least to greatest. So let's look at this set of integers as an example. So we start at the first position here, and what we're going to do is search from this point in the array all the way to the end, and remember the index of the smallest number that we find. So we do that starting at 4, so the current lowest number we've seen is 4. And then we look at five. Now is five less than four? No, so four is still the lowest that we've seen. And then we move on to one. Is one less than four? Yes, it is. So, so far one is the lowest number that we've seen. And then we'll move on to the two. Is two less than one? No, one is still the lowest. And then we move on to three. Is three less than one? No, one is still the lowest. So now we've gotten to the end of the array and we know that the number one is the lowest number that we saw. So what we're going to do is swap this one with this first position that we were looking at. So we put the one over here and this four over here. So now we know that this one is the lowest number in the entire array and that this one is definitely in the right spot. Next, we do the exact same thing, but we start at the next position in the array. So we're looking at five. Five is the current lowest number that we've seen. And then we move on to four. Is four less than five? Yes. So now four is the lowest number we've seen. And then we move on to two. Is two less than four? Yes, it is. So now two is the lowest we've seen. And then we move on to three. Three is not less than two. And we've now reached the end of the array. And two is the smallest number that we've seen. So what we're going to do is take this two and swap it with that position that we started at. Now we know that the one and the two are in their proper positions. And we can move on to starting with this next position. And we do the exact same thing. We start here and find the lowest number. So we start with four, five is not less than four, three is less than four, and we're at the end of the array. So we do the swap again by putting the three here and the four here. And now we know the one, two, and three are in the right positions, and we move on to the next position in the array. So we start with the number five, and then is four less than five? Yes, it is. We reach the end of the array, and four is the smallest number we've seen. So now we swap these two. Now, once we're looking at the very last number in the array, we know that there's nothing past it to switch with, so we know that it's automatically already in the right place. And so that's it, we're done. We now have the array of integers in the correct natural order. Now that we understand how selection sort works, let's jump right into the code. Okay, first let's take care of some of the setup. The first thing that we're going to need is an array of ints to sort. So let's go ahead and create that. We're gonna make an int array We'll just call it numbers equals new int array. We'll give it some way larger arrays later to see how well the sort performs. But for now, just for testing purposes, we'll start with just having it sort an array of 10 ints. Okay, so now we want to generate some random numbers to put into this array. So to generate random numbers in Java, we'll use the random class. Not just some random class, the random class equals new random. Okay, so now we're going to loop through this numbers array, filling it up with random ints. So to do that, we'll use a for loop for int i equals zero. We'll loop while i is less than numbers.length i plus plus. All right, so for each position in this array, we're going to assign it a random number. So we'll set numbers at i equal to random.next int. Now let's use a wide variety of ints, anything between like zero and 100,000. So now just for testing purposes, let's go ahead and print out our array just to make sure we're filling up the array how we think we are. Now a good way in modern versions of Java to get a string representation of an array is to use arrays dot to string and then pass in your array. Now let's go ahead and run this and make sure we get a nice random selection of ints. 10 ints, they look pretty random between zero and 100,000, so we're all set. Next, what we want to do is make the call to our not yet implemented selection sort method. And then what we'll do is implement the selection sort algorithm inside that method. So what we'll do is say selection sort and then pass in our numbers array. 
Now it's of course complaining that this method doesn't exist yet, but IntelliJ makes it easy to go ahead and create this method automatically. But then back up here, right after we call our selection sort method, what we want to do is print out the array again, which should at this point be sorted in order from least to greatest. So now our only job is to implement the selection sort algorithm here in this method. The first thing that might be kind of useful to have here in our selection sort method is a variable that holds the length of our array, just because we'll need it in a couple of spots in the algorithm. So we'll just create an int, we'll call it length, and set it equal to numbers dot length. All right, now remember, we want to start with a loop that goes through every position in the array. And then within each iteration of that loop, we'll have another loop that will try to find the smallest element from that point on in the array. Okay, so let's start with the outer loop. We'll say for int i equal to zero. So that's starting at the very first element in the array, the zeroth element. We'll keep looping while i is less than the length of our array. And of course, iterate i each time. Okay, so now within each iteration of that loop, we want to find the smallest number from that point on in the array. Inside this loop, first we're going to want a couple of variables. One will be the lowest number that we've found so far while iterating through the rest of the array. The second variable will be the index, the position in the array where we found that smallest number. And that's because once we identify that smallest number, we need to know where it was in the array so that we can swap it to the front where it belongs. So first let's create a variable for the min number that we found so far, and we'll initialize it to this first value that we're looking at. So for example, if our outer loop is currently at this number four, we'll start with our min being four, and then iterate from there to the end of the array trying to find the smallest number. So we'll set our min equal to our numbers array at i. And then we'll want that other variable for the index where we found that min. So index of min, we'll set that equal to i. So now is when we're going to have this inner loop that loops from our current position all the way to the end of the array, trying to find the minimum number. So for that, we'll use another for loop. And since we already used i, we'll use j for this one. And we're going to initialize it to i plus one. So that's going to be just one past this current starting position. And we're going to keep looping while j is less than the length of our array. And then of course, iterate each time with j plus plus. And actually one thing I missed up here in our outer array, we don't want to go all the way to the end of the array for this. Remember, we can stop at the second last position in the array, because once we get to the very last position, there's going to be nothing to swap it with. We know that it's already where it goes, and so there's no reason to actually look at it. So for this outer loop, instead of looping while i is less than length, we can loop while i is less than length minus one. Okay, now back to this inner for loop. So it'll be looping from one past our current position in the array all the way to the end, trying to find the minimum number. So for each number that we run into, we're going to say if the value of our numbers array at that position j, is less than our current min, then we have found a new smallest number. So we need to set our min equal to the value of our numbers array at position j. We have a new minimum. And then we want to remember where we found that minimum too. So we're going to set index of min equal to j. So now once we are done with this inner for loop, once we have hopped out of this inner for loop, we should have found our minimum number and we should know exactly where it is. So going back to our example here, let's say we were starting with this number four and we loop through the entire rest of the array to find the minimum and we've identified, oh, one is our minimum. So we want to take where we found that minimum and swap it with the number that we were starting with like this. So here it'd probably be a good idea to implement some kind of a swap method. Now there's a few things we have to provide to a swap method. First is the actual array inside which we want to swap two positions. And then we need to send in the two positions that we want to swap values at. So here we want to swap the numbers that are at position i with the index where we found that minimum number. We want to take that smallest number that we found and move it to its correct position in the array. All right, so now let's go ahead and auto-generate this method. 
and we'll rename these int parameters here to make it a little bit more general. We'll just call it int a and int b. Now to do a simple swap of two elements in the array, first you're going to need some kind of temporary variable to hold one of them while you do the swap. So we'll set int temp equal to our numbers array at position a, and then we're going to set our numbers array at a equal to the value of our numbers array at b. And then all we have to do is set the value of our numbers array at b equal to that temporary value that we set off to the side. Now I think that should be it. Now once it gets out of this outer for loop, the entire array should be sorted in the correct order. Let's give it a run and see if it works. Okay, so here is our initial completely unsorted array, and here it is afterward. Looks like in perfectly sorted order. Awesome! So we've successfully implemented our selection sort algorithm. Now comes the fun part where we get to see how well it performs with larger and larger arrays of ints. So first let's just take a second and set up some really quick uh, timing code. So right before we call our selection sort algorithm, we're going to create a long to hold the current time. We'll call it start time equals system dot current time millis. And then we'll do the exact same thing afterwards, but we'll call it end time. And then right before we print out our sorted array, we'll print out that it took however many milliseconds. So we'll calculate that as just end time minus start time. And then ms for milliseconds. Okay, now let's go ahead and give this a run to make sure it works for our teeny tiny array of 10 ints. All right, so for an array of 10 ints, it took uh, basically no time at all, which is to be expected. Now let's take it up a notch and let's say we wanted to sort out, let's just say 10,000 ints. Okay, so for 10,000, it went from zero to 87 milliseconds. So it returned pretty quickly, but it's kind of starting to slow down. Now let's do 10 times that and step it up to 100,000. Here we go. Okay, it's printed out the before state, the unsorted array, and it's still running. Oh, okay, it finished. So it took about 6,500 milliseconds, about six and a half seconds to sort 100,000 ints. So it's starting to get noticeably slow. Let's try just stepping it up to 300,000. Taking its sweet time on this one. Uh, you guys played that new Zelda game? I hear it really does live up to the hype. I just haven't had time to play it yet, but I am looking forward to it. Oh, looks like it finished. Okay, so 300,000 ints took 51,936 milliseconds. So about 52 seconds, almost a full minute. So let's go ahead and step it all the way up to 1 million. Good luck, computer. Sorry. All right. Yeah, so I think I'm going to let this do its thing, and I'm going to go do something useful with my life while it runs. So I'll see you when it's finished. All right, so have we finished? Yes, we have. It only took 645,000 milliseconds, like 10 or 11 minutes. That's a pretty long time. So you probably wouldn't want your uh, production ready enterprise application to be using selection sort to sort a million ints. So we could do 10 million, 100 million. I'll leave that as an exercise to you, the viewer. If you have the time to dedicate to that, go ahead and leave in the comments below how long it took for your computer to, I don't know, sort 100 million ints with selection sort. Now, the reason that this algorithm is so slow, especially compared to things like quick sort, merge sort, is because selection sort has a time complexity of what's called big O of n squared. Now, what that means is as the size of the array that you want to sort grows, the time it takes to sort that array grows exponentially. Now, the reason that it's big O of n squared in particular is that our algorithm has nested for loops that loop through every element in the array within itself. So that results in a time complexity of big O of n squared. Now, if you'd like to code some way faster sorting algorithms, check out my videos on quick sort and merge sort. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know by leaving a like and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss each new video. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate you being here to code with me and I'll see you next time.